So in the last couple of weeks, EA Sports have launched all the brand new features and deep dives into the brand new FC25 game. So let's go into it and see how much has really changed. Tell me down below your thoughts in the comments, like the video and also subscribe if you are new. If you're new here, I was a FIFA content creator for multiple years and I don't really do it much anymore. However, when it comes to events like this about a brand new FIFA, I like to give my thoughts on it because uh, you guys seem to really care about what I think about it because I guess I, I'm from the outside looking in now. So here's my view on it, if you guys even care. So let's go. Also, quickly, by the way, I want to show you guys this thing. Um, I received this yesterday. This is actually a, a trophy for hitting 10,000 orders on my company, Mazzola Designs. You guys must know of it. It's in every single video. It's always behind me. So as a thank you for hitting 10,000 orders, thank you so much for that. It means the world to me, honestly. Because a brand new season is almost here, um, 2425 is the current discount code, 20% off all items. And, and thank you very much, by the way. So let's get straight into this, right? So um, let's go through some good things. Now, typically FIFA's is um, not really changing all too much. However, in this, I actually have got some good things to say. Let's go through career mode. Out of every part of the new FIFA, career mode by far has actually got the most um, actual significant upgrades I could find and there's a, a good bit of it which I actually think is actually pretty impressive. Number one, start points. This is a feature they brought in which is similar to how they had it back in the day of even let's say the old um, World Cup game modes or even Champions League game they had back in the 2000s where they, it's basically like a challenge mode, playing through real life moments of football and in this you can actually live it as a career mode. Now this has been something that we've been wanting back for years because this kind of was already in the game back in FIFA 15 and 16 with Match Day Live, where in the main menu does Match Day Live, where you can actually go and play, I believe in the top five leagues and maybe some other leagues as well, where you can play week to week of the upcoming match. And it was kind of basic, but it runs off that kind of idea. But this is actually like a full on career mode for um, I believe really any part of the season. It probably won't be available till about October, November, time it's a good feature it's something that we wanted for a while and i'm quite happy that they've actually put it back in but they've actually expanded onto it in an actual career mode so to ea fair play that's a good feature number two another good feature is with pro player career mode now of course there's the origin stories now with most pro player career modes it can get a bit boring where like you're just always starting off as an 18 17 year old and you're rising through the ranks and it kind of is the same thing each time at least here it's something a bit different where you got an origin story so sometimes you can be an 18 year old with a low rating and rise up through the ranks or you can be someone who's 23 or someone who's 27 who's already got a part of their career that's already got a decent rating it basically gives the option of do you want to start off as an 18 year old every single time or you can start off at 27 and have a, a kind of shorter career mode experience which i think is fine now when it comes to fciq as i said in my previous video it, it kind of uh, fciq or, or you know hyper motion or the most realistic immersive experience all these buzzwords that they use usually it's a bunch of nonsense and in my opinion for me all these new additions of realism actually makes the game work in terms of actual presentation of how good it looks, it looks fantastic. However, actually playing the game, I find it to be much more weighted, a lot more sluggish, and it's not for me a, a better playing experience. Now, for FC IQ, this is a new thing they've added, which again sounds like a bunch of buzzwords. I do feel like for career mode, again, it, it actually will be beneficial. I don't think for ultimate team it will be at all if anything i think it'd be more of a detriment for the meta and i think it will lead to more people playing as the same way every single time which is a shame however sadly that is the case with every single like competitive scene if you would even can call it a competitive scene for career mode it does look like it can add an element of much more customization to your squad you can try and i hope it actually makes an impact of how your players are actually playing the game all these plus plus and pluses as well and a build-up style and but if you're someone that really takes career mode seriously i can find people finding a lot of enjoyment out of this they did go into press conferences which i feel like won't mean too much i think people just find out quite fast what is like the ideal thing to do and just spam through them i don't think that really matters social media plays a factor as too. got fabrizio Mon, which i feel like is like okay cool social media aspect to it it was already in the game back in fifa 17 18 19 for journey and also when it comes to the youth academy it looks like they've done more to that now typically for me i'm not one that really cares much about the youth academy that's typically because i don't really play fifa uh, or many seasons into it 
that far ahead to really make it play a factor. But if you're someone that plays career mode a lot, this would be good for you as well. So honestly, like when it comes to career mode, I, I think I think it's a W. And also one thing as well, which I think is actually really important, which I find really important, is a customization of the actual game itself. Not only by of course, the sliders of your team and your opponent's team, but also how the CPU teams actually play in the world. So you can change their behavior, you can change how they train, you can change how they transfer, how lean they are, how strict they are. You can kind of change how t tough the game is for you, which I think, again, the, the more customizations, the better. So honestly, all around, I can't really complain much at all about career mode. I actually think they've added things. And that is me saying that. Okay, I know people want to say I'm always negative, but when I actually find things that I think actually makes a difference, then I'll say it. Now, let's go on to FUT, where now it all falls apart. Now look, okay. <laughs> if your main, like, selling point for not just FUT, but what looks to be the actual entire game, it's the first thing on their features, it's the first thing on the features overview. Look, if your main thing is rush, then you've got a problem. Like, if, if the main thing and your first thing you say is rush, then we have it's over, as far as I'm concerned, in terms of actual things you've actually improved on the game. Rush, for me, and maybe because I don't have many people that I play with online, I guess, but, like, I just think it is just a gimmick. It's basically Volta, but on an actual pitch. That's kind of all it is. You can't really play online with it, so like it literally is just you playing with your friends. And it reminds me of like the moments mode they had like a year or so ago where they put it as like a big feature on Ultimate Team and it literally changed nothing the entire year. You got these moments points that the rewards that you got did not change the entire year. No one even noticed that moments was even there. For me, Rush is a gimmick that for me, I don't think people will really care about or play. I just think that it's just a thing that people may play once or twice, uh, not really... In not find it that interesting, and then move on. Um, also, about the FUT deep dive, I, 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 pie face, ginge, Philly. Ultimate team in 25 is social. Aslan, my guy, take it away. You know. <laughs> For me, FUT is where it gets the most egregious when it comes to actual improvements on the game. So they've got, um, so again, it just goes into rush a lot of times, which I think is just nonsense and not really worthwhile whatsoever. The worst thing that I find is that the menus is literally the same. Like, and that is a real issue with me as a as a designer, that it just is the same. Like, I liked it. And maybe it's just a real nitpick. Maybe it really is. But when it comes to FIFA 14 or 13 or 17 or FIFA 10, there's a style to it. There's a design element that makes one game different to another. In 13, you had the hexagons. In 12, you had the little stripe to the side that was different colors, depending on who you support. In 15, you got the little, like, I don't even know how to describe it, it golden ring thing. In 17, it was all the yellows, and it was really vibrant in that regard. For 19, it was at least blue. Now, of course, each year, they changed the design element of each one. Like, if you look at FIFA 12 to FIFA 13, even though the menu for the main menu is actually, like, almost the same in terms of the actual design of it, how it looked was completely different. It was a different style whatsoever, like, completely. But however, in this FIFA, it looks like everything is the same. Like, everything's the same, the car design might as well be the same, the menus are the same, everything is the same. And I, I just find that really lazy. I just really do. And it's a real nitpick, but I just really find it lazy. And this is, for me, kind of what annoys me the most about FUT, is that everything feels the same. Like, they added the new stadium. It's the same stadium. Like, yes, you may say that from the outside it looks different, but when you actually play and an actual match, the stadium might as well look the same. Like, you can't say it's a new stadium, however, when you actually play the match, it looks the exact same. I just hate the fact that every single match, it looks the same in the same stadium, the same lighting and the same vibrancy. Every single Foot Champions match is played in the same stadium, which I find really annoying. Um, and sadly, when it comes to rivals, you can play in an actual stadium, you know, Turf Moor or Emirates, but it feels like people just don't, and that annoys me, because like, it just makes every single game feel the same. So yeah, for FCIQ, for FUT, they've added these different roles that I, I think could make a difference. I just feel like they will just be a, a meta that everyone would then search on YouTube and everyone will copy. However, I think that's more of an issue with the community more than the actual game itself. So maybe that's not really to the fault of EA. And look, adding more customization of how you play the game 
is all around a, a benefit, so I can't complain too much. I'm just more concerned about how this will be abused by the community. Evolutions, they've changed a bit as well, so it adds more variety of different types of evolutions you could do. For me, Evolutions was by far the best thing they added to FPT last year. If it wasn't for Evolutions, I don't think I would have played the game really much at all for the first couple of weeks. Duplicate storage, after all these years, I think it's been almost eight years, they finally added to the game, which was put in FIFA back in for the World Cup more. So we've been, we've been begging for since the start. And then there's Division Rivals that like, they took out relegation for some stupid reason, and now they've put it back in and then saying that it's now a feature again. Again, that's not a new feature. You just took out something a year or so ago and put it back in and claiming it's a new feature. So really, when it comes to FUT, I, I, I just feel like it is pretty much the same experience all around. I don't think there's anything that's really going to change it much at all. Okay, so anything new here? There's clubs. Um, clubs, they've added what? A, a clubhouse. Uh, it's kind of like a social space. They put something like this back into F1. They added a change in menu as well. That's fine. A rush, I think, in clubs makes more sense. I think there's a chance of people enjoying that a bit more over there. Just not much for FUT. I can't see it being really used over there. There's facilities for clubs. I think that's great. I think that's great. Facilities for clubs. It can actually improve and make your development faster. I think that's fantastic. Thank you for that. So all around, would I suggest you buy the game? When it comes to career mode, I would say so. I think it does actually make an improvement onto what happened last year. For clubs, I would also suggest that I think it does also make an impact as well. The facilities, I think, is a big factor. Money to actually improve things, I think, is a big factor. When it comes to FUT, I, I don't think as much changed into FUT or all too much that really is vital. Of course, you buy it anyway. However, I just don't think there's much more added to it that makes that much of a difference. But if you enjoy the SBCs, you enjoy the grind of the objectives, you, I'm sure that you'll find enjoyment. That's my review of FC25. Tell me down below your thoughts. See, I'm not always negative. I will tell you guys what I think when I see it. And I think there are some things here that I actually think makes a difference. I do find the menus annoying that it looks the exact same. I do think the game in terms of the gameplay is sluggish and also kind of always looks the same but it does look nice you know in terms of presentation graphics it's really good so i can't complain so yeah comment down below your thoughts